All right, good morning, everybody, or good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are at in the world. Welcome to our live trade room. It is Trade Room Tuesday, and that means we're opening up the trade room so that everyone can join us and see how uh, we trade in the New York session. Very straightforward. We do it the same way every day, but it's kind of nice to jump in and trade with other people. So uh, if this is your first time, welcome. I want to say welcome to all of the students that are joining me uh, via Zoom in the live room. Uh, it's good to see everybody uh, there as well. Okay, we've got quite a, a, a tight-knit group of traders that come and join every day, and it's good to see them every day. All right. If you're new to the trade room or if you're new to this experience, uh, first, let me say welcome. Second of all, let me just break down exactly what we're going to be doing here. This is our pre-market prep room. We will be taking trades if they become available, right? But what we're basically doing is we're setting up all of our um, our, we're, we're going through all of our charts, we're scanning through all of our pairs, and we're doing our pre-market analysis to get everything in place so that when the action really kicks off in about an hour from now, we are be, will be ready to jump in and start actively hunting trades without just jumping into situations that we haven't fully analyzed yet. Okay, so this is our analysis time. This is where we set up for success. First thing that we're going to do is we're going to check the uh, news. Um, actually, Let's take a quick look at the stock market. It's always a good indicator of which direction that the dollar will be opening at. We'll also look at the actual dollar, but first we wanna take a look at the implied open of the Dow Jones, the S&P 500 and the NASDAQ, all showing uh, very bullish implied opens. So it's setting up for the US dollar to open up strong this morning. We'll see if that happens, but as of right now, it's showing that we should have a strong dollar today, and it'll depend on what has happened in the last couple sessions as to how we approach that. Let's take a look at High Impact News. Now remember, if you guys have any questions about anything, uh, post them in the chats, and I will make sure to look at both of the live room chats that are going on and get all of the questions answered. If I can't answer it in real time, I'll make sure and circle back and answer any questions that you have at the end of the session. If it's anything extra complicated, we can jump off and uh, look, at a, look at a chart and talk about it a little in a little more detail. But we wanna try and keep this live room to 45 minutes, no longer than an hour. Like I said, we wanna start actually trading at the end of the hour. High impact news for today. Let me make sure we've got the most recent refreshed view. Yes, we do. Uh, we're coming off bank holidays for some of the European countries, although today is still a bank holiday for Italy. So whether or not that's going to affect the euro yet to be seen. We do have gross domestic product numbers quarter over quarter coming out for the Australian dollar, but that's in the next Asian session. So technically that's going to be tomorrow, but we do want to keep that in mind in case we have any uh, Australian dollar trades going, we want to make sure to secure our profits or tighten up our stops. Other than that, we did have some Australian news come out last night or in today's earlier Tokyo session, uh, rate statement. And as we talked about in the past, rate statements can cause a lot of volatility in the market. So we'll see how that's affected the Australian dollar in just a second. Otherwise, not a lot going on. Do, again, keep in mind, we have NFP coming up on Friday. So expect slow markets on Thursday and then volatile markets on Friday. Although again, we're not going to get really deep in, you know, we're not going to talk really at all about the economic and civil unrest that's going on um, in a lot of parts of the world, focused a lot in some of the larger cities in America over the past five days, uh, you know, civilian protests against the police departments. It doesn't, have a lot to do with what we're doing other than the fact that it will cause some erratic movements in the markets. Because remember, some hallmark businesses are being destroyed and looted, okay? That's gonna have a ripple. Whatever your stance is on the riots, it will have a ripple effect in the markets. So do expect a little bit of fluctuation, maybe a little more volatile markets than normal for an NFP week. It's just gonna depend on what we see happening. All right, let's take a look at the actual markets and talk about what's going on in front of us. Um, let's see here. Do, do, do. We have a question. How to calculate the position size of gold um, using baby pips, but uh, it doesn't have gold on there. 
Uh, yeah, that's true. Baby Pips does not. You'd have to find a special lot size calculator or use. It's like it's a long kind of algebraic formula formula that you'd have to use. You have to do it by hand. Um, I'll send that to you uh, in the chats. Uh, I don't know of uh, actual uh, something other than Baby Pips, but we have there's actually indicator. Um, I'm sure there's another site that you can use and then there's an actual formula that you can use. We'll take a look at that um, after, after today because I don't have that right on hand, but it's a good question, Ronaldo's. All right, uh, let's see, for the dollars. So now we're gonna go through our overnights. We're gonna take a look at everything that's happened in the London session. What we're looking for are big movements that have happened. We just need to know, are any currencies currently trending uh, highly? Are they highly bullish, highly bearish at this point in time? That way we know as we step into the markets, what we're stepping into. We wanna first look at the dollar. These V formations are happening constantly. Okay, these are happening a lot. We're getting uh, a, either you know, a lot of bearish pushes in the London or the um, Asian session, and then a retracement, again, going full round trip, meaning returning to its starting or opening price um, regularly. We're seeing this happen a lot. As you can see, we've marked a lot of these V formations because we need to anticipate that these are going to happen when we see bearish pushes happening in the London session and then we see the retracement happening in the US session. So if we were to look at that today, uh, we could somewhat expect for price to return to this level. Okay, um, we're seeing the last three hours the dollar has rallied here in the London session. Okay, it's finishing up its rally right now. So we can kind of expect for that to continue look for a semi bullish dollar. I mean, it's not, it's not on fire or anything, but look for bullish retracements to be happening on the dollar throughout the next couple of hours. All right, let's take a look at our currency pairs themselves. We're gonna scan through these really quickly. And again, what we're looking for are volatile moves like this, because we're trying to map out the currency strengths of each currency. And rather than use a lagging or uh, you know, janky currency strength meter, you know, I'm not a big fan of those. We're just going to use our eyeballs and look at the actual currencies to see what's going and what's not. As you can see here, very obvious Australian dollars pushing up. Nice, uh, almost almost 70 plus pip move, 75 pip move. Um, if we were to start all the way at the bottom on Audi CAD. So we need to know, is that strength in the Audi? Again, this could have come off that rate statement. Um, is that strength in the Audi or weakness in the CAD? We can see it's pushed up against the franc the same way and the yen. Okay, so we can conclude, uh, getting a little pushback from the Kiwi, but not much. So we can conclude that the Australian dollar is, let me silence that out, is fairly strong, right? So we're gonna keep track of that down below here. Okay, we will put that AUD still strong. It was strong yesterday, okay? And it's strong again today, it continues to push up. So we'll keep our eye on that as we go along. All right, CAD looking a little bit strong. Okay, CAD also strong as well. Now we, when we pair that up against the Audi, it not strong at all, right? Getting dominated, but up against the franc strong, up against the yen strong. So it does have some strength to it and we'll keep that in mind. A uh, bit, bit of a push and pull against the franc and the yen. Interested to know if this is franc news or yen weakness. We'll look through more of the pairs and try and piece that together. Euro week against the Audi, Euro week oh, holding its own against the CAD actually, and pushing back against the Swiss franc. So it's looking like the Swiss franc is actually fairly weak, but the Euro and the yen is very weak. That could explain this, okay, this whiplash here, two extremely weak currencies going up against each other, and that's a very classic battle against buyers and sellers. Again, extremely weak. We see the Euro is not weak against some of these others. It's actually being pushed around, or it is weak against some of these others, but not against the Swiss franc. So it, if we uh, see it also dominating the yen, we'll know that that's true. And there it is. Well, we saw that just a second ago. So kind of knew that was happening. Push and pull against the Kiwi. So a bit neutral against the Kiwi. A little bit strong against the dollar, coming out swinging, but the dollar is starting to rally as well. Okay, so the Euro is a bit of a neutral currency and we can definitely tell that the Swiss franc um, is, yeah, yesterday was a very low volatility day. Not a lot was able to happen yesterday, but we should see that in 
uh, change today. So we know for the most part, franc and the yen are weak. Okay, um, this is interesting where the pound kind of held its own there for a second, but then Audi took over. Pound holding its own against the CAD and yet yeah, strong against the franc, strong against the yen. We could expect that. Full round trip on GN. That's that's big because we know GN moves massively. Look at that, 150, 170 pips at its peak. That's round trip, 170 pip ADR today. Well, that's average daily range, but today it's daily range has already gone over 170 pips, both up and down. So that's pretty, that's fairly impressive for GN. We've got a lot of volatility in that pair. Okay, but other than that, GBP and the, the pound sterling is looking very strong. Kiwi is weak, but then rallying against some of the weaker pairs. So against the CAD, not so much, but against some of these others, it's dominating. So we could call that a neutral pair, uh, pushing against the dollar, but we should see the dollar push back. All right. So we'll put that um, NZD and GBP is one of our stronger pairs, our stronger currencies. Sorry, not, it's not a pair, it's a currency. And then US dollar getting bullied a little bit, but oh yeah, definitely taking over some of these currencies, uh, some of the weaker currencies like franc and the yen. And then gold is very sideways, very sideways. So we'll talk about this consolidation and this chop that's going on with gold, see if we can't make something out of this. Um, it's breaking out of this range slowly but surely. Okay. So we need to put a game plan in place for that. It's really hanging in and this smaller, what would be a demand zone now. It's really struggling to break out completely. We keep seeing it retest the top of this range and of that demand zone. So a lot of sideways movement on gold. We don't have any strong uh, direction yet, but if the dollar starts to pick up, we, see, we could see gold start to pick up as well as they have been moving in a correlated fashion lately and not inversely as we're used to, as we're used to. We're used to gold and, and the dollar moving in opposite directions. All right, so yeah, we still have the, the Kiwi is fairly neutral and the dollar is fairly neutral as well. But we could see that strengthening up in this New York session um, as we've seen in the past. We've seen the dollar being very weak during London session and then very strong during New York session as it rallies. Um, we're just gonna have to see where it goes today, but that's gonna be our basic currency strengths. All right, so let's go ahead and jump into our trades. We'll reset this. This is just our, wa our watch list. And then we'll get into what gold is looking at as far as whether it's risk on or risk off for us to trade today. Let's go ahead and get started with the analysis. So that's our pre-market. We just need to do a little bit of pre-market analysis. Now we know what currencies are, str are strong, which ones are weak, which ones are trending, okay? And uh, we know that uh, the dollar should be getting some strength into it, and we don't have any major news events coming up today. And that's really all the information that we need to go ahead and get started looking for setups using our three main strategies, which we've actually kind of whittled down to two main strategies, one being the RTM strategy, which we're about to go over right now, and then the second being the uh, hybrid strategy, which we're currently using, which is a combination of our levels and our triple EMA or our one, two, three setup, okay? So we've done, we've, we did that out of necessity over the last couple months, which actually been a boon because we now use that to uh, analyze pairs much more quickly than we used to in the past. So sometimes out of, uh, you know, sometimes out of struggle comes some new ways to do things that actually end up benefiting you. AJ is just to the moon right now. There's nothing we can do with that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go through these. This is how we scan through all 28 pairs on our RTM setups. I'm gonna do that relatively quickly. If I see something that's worth noting, we'll take a look at it and I'll explain it a little bit more, but I'm just gonna push through these very quickly. Um, so that we can get to the uh, get through the analysis of all of our pairs and look for some actual setups. And again, if you guys have any questions, just let me know in the chats. 
We'll try and answer them as we go along. Now, if you're not familiar with these methods, don't worry. These are unique strategies that we use that are taught in the Renko course. If you're interested in learning how we take these trades, you know, message me or visit the website, zenfxtrading.com. All the links are in the description of the video if you're watching it on YouTube. But um, other than that, if you don't understand what we're doing, it's okay. I just This room is just to show you what we do each morning in our live trade rooms and how we look for setups. And then hopefully that can help you in whatever type of trading that you're doing, whether it be Renko, price action based, what have you. All right. I can tell you though that we're looking for price to be outside of the blue bands in a very specific way. We're looking for divergent trade setups. And for that, we need two distinct peaks that are showing divergence in the oscillator that we're choosing to use, which in this case is the MACD, okay? Um, that way we're looking for overstretched price. You know, we're looking for price that's overbought or oversold and then giving us a divergent type of setup so that we can basically anticipate that reversal or that retracement and that's where we take our trades. Now this is a counter trend trade type of uh, trading setup. Okay, so keep that in mind. We're looking for retracements. We're looking for short, quick trades. And again, these are just counter trend trades that we're looking to add to our overall weekly, um, well, we add to add to our arsenal, but to add just some like 30, 60 pips weekly onto your you know, P&L, onto the bottom line of your, of, your, of your trading. So these are more of supplemental trades that we look for. Euro JPY, is, this is a nice peak. All right, so for the students, let's keep an eye on that. We'll add that to the watch list. Oops. Nothing just yet, nothing showing just yet, looking ready to go. Let's take a look at EN. Uh, Euro NZD, possible, possible. We need this, uh, we'd need a second peak to come down a little bit further but that will definitely be added to the watch list. Okay. I'm telling you what though, what a great time though to be able to have this type of skill. I know most of the people that are here and I see some of the people that are in the uh, Facebook room. I know that a lot of you guys have been trading for a while. I know that my students and I have been trading together for a while. Some are new, but most of them have been with me for, for a while. And what an incredible time to have this type of skill set to be able to stay at home, avoid all of the civil unrest or all of the craziness that's going on in the world and just focus on charts and be able to look at these charts and make money from home. Now I see a lot of students using these types of setups to look for divergent trades because on its, you know, on its face, it looks like we've got two peaks, you know, with a divergent setup. The problem is, and I say this all the time, two bricks is not enough of a pullback to give you any type of kind of snapback momentum. All right. What we need are, you know, I say, try and you look for peaks that have at least three bricks or better. What we're looking for, you know, is that that push and that pullback, and we want a strong reaction from the opposite side, right? So here we have buyers, they're pushing up, okay? Then here we have pushback from sellers, and we want that pushback to be dramatic in some sense. Then the third element is we want buyers to really rally hard against that, that, uh, that retracement, that initial one. We want them to basically commit all of their reserves 
into rallying against price and trying to push it up as high, as high, as high as you possibly can, right? There, it's like an, a rocket running out of rocket fuel. It's eventually gonna peak out. And then that's where we look for that divergent return to earth. That's where we make the money quick in and out. And now whether it hits a median and then continues on its way or it turns into a true price reversal and continues on down, we're already out of there. We're already, we've already pipped and dipped. Okay, we've already gotten in and out with our, with our trade and now we're looking for the next setup. And if it turns out to be a true reversal, perfect. Now let's throw on the levels template and start looking for some long-term swing trade opportunities now that we know that the reversal, you know, that the fix is on basically, okay? Um, and again, if any of this is a little bit confusing or if you're new to Renko trading, that's, that's fine. Again, I'm just trying to show you some high level principles of how we trade. And uh, if you trade differently or if you uh, aren't familiar with Renko's, it's no worries there. Give me, you know, hit me up. I'll get you, I'll get you squared away with, with trading Renko's. It's actually not as difficult as you think, and it really clears out a lot of the noise in the markets. So let's see here. Still looking, still looking. Okay, let's let that update here just in a second. And NCDU's pushing up. See USD Swiss francs kind of leveling out. Um, USD CAD looks like we have some possibility here. Yeah, nice little peek on UCAD. Okay, so that's a that's one that we'll definitely keep in mind. So we have three pairs: Euro JPY, Euro NZD, and USD CAD. Let's go ahead and add those to our watch list. So what we're going to do here? I'm going to set up an active watch list. I have a special profile that I use just for that once I'm done scanning through my pairs. And then this way I can set up alerts and then just walk away, which is what you wanna be able to do. You wanna be able to have your charts automated to a certain extent to where you don't have to sit in front of them all day. I could, I could go into my uh, swing trading versus scalping uh lecture again but i will not i will not oh yeah all i'll tell you is if you think scalping is the way to go if you think scalping is the way to your freedom it's re it's really just a much tighter tighter prison cell because it will chain you to your charts swing swing trading will set you free it will set you free all right All right, so Euro JPY is already starting to push up, but we will go ahead and set our alert because we want to be able to come back and analyze this when the setup happens. And the setup is the double top. Okay, so we're going to take this upper limit alert and put it up here on the double top level. Good. We'll just leave it there and then we'll get a ding when this double top forms. I'd much rather see it again, like we talked about, push down a little bit further, have a, a little bit more of a, of a, a retracement and then rally that's going to give us a, a much stronger setup but hey the market's going to do what the market's going to do we just kind of have to go with whatever's happening again it's, i try and tell the students all the time don't try and be right just try and make money okay just go with what the market is doing don't get of a mindset where you're like i think that the market's going to do this and if it doesn't do this then you know I'm still going to trade that way. You know, you have to be flexible when you're trading, you know, as new, just like an indicator, when new data comes in, indicator has to adjust. Sometimes that means it has to repaint. That's the whole point of assimilating new data. You know, if you have an indicator that doesn't ever repaint, I know that's like the Holy grail of indicators for some people, but it also means that you're not taking into consideration any of the new data that's come in, you know, and you have to adjust with that data, you know? So, yeah, I don't want to, I don't want to get into all that. So we have all of our, we have all of our alerts set. Like here, what we're going to do is we're going to wait for this double bottom to form. And then that's where, let me get my tool. Um, we're waiting for this to come back down and hit this double bottom. 
Once that happens, then we'll start looking for the setup. Then we'll come back in and see, is there still divergence, right? Is it still outside of the blue band? Do we have everything still in place? And we'll do a final uh, you know, pre-trade check. And if it still fits all of our criteria, then we'll start stocking it and we'll look to actually enter on the next reversal brick. Okay, we don't enter while it's still pushing down. We wait for it to reverse, then we jump in that's our cue to get in. And that's what it allows us to get the best risk to reward. All right, let's see here. Let me disable that. Perfect. All right, that's all set. Let's go ahead and let's start looking at our, our hybrid setups. Again, we call these hybrid setups because we're looking at both our one, two, three, you know, A, B, and C, D type of setups. You know, one, two, three is basically just an A, B, C, D setup using EMAs. And then we're also looking at our levels to look for level setups. Right? Now this Audi CAD, we looked at this yesterday. This one actually did play out. This one set up in London. It was either London or the uh, Tokyo session. I wasn't awake to take this, but hopefully some of the students jumped in on this. We had this marked up, came down, went a little bit outside the 36, but you notice that they never crossed, right? We had the level form here, retracement, and it all stayed above the 50. It never went below the 61.8. So that's a money entry right there. Perfect. Entry be right there. If you had been trading in the New York or in the London session, you'd be up about 70 pips right now. Okay. Beautiful one, two, three entry, simple. And that's how we like to keep it. We like to keep it simple. Nothing for us to do on this until we see another rejection level in a secondary level form. That's the only entry. We'd get on that, but right now, again, Audi is on fire, so the chances of this pulling back anytime soon uh, are minimal, minimal. But we can see a possible retracement in the, uh, you know, in the New York session, because if the dollar starts to rally, we could see the, the Audi weaken a little bit, take kind of a bit of a pause. All right, Audi Swiss Franc is to the moon. This is a volatile uptrend. Okay, remember, we have our nine market types, right? I know that when we, again, this is for some of the newer people that are just joining us. I know that when we're first taught Forex, we're taught the very basic uptrend, downtrend range, right? That's what you're taught. Those are the three market types. But they actually break down into much more uh, detailed market types where we have volatility come in and we can have low, normal, and high volatility in any of these three, okay? So we could have a low volatility uptrend, a normal volatility uptrend, or an extreme volatility uptrend. And this here is extreme volatility because it's just off to the races. It's not pulling back at all and it's not giving us any place to actually enter in, all right? So for now, we'll have to wait until that either slows down and pulls back and gives us a chance to actually jump in, okay? Same with Audi. JPY, let's back out a little bit, maybe get a larger picture there. So we have our daily support level. So we're still above daily support. And we get a quick refresh there. Yeah. We're gonna need a, first we're gonna need a secondary level and then we're gonna, or excuse me, we're gonna need this to get rejected up here somewhere and then pull back to a secondary level before this will be even a possibility of an entry. Audi NZD doing a little bit of a pullback right now. Okay, let's keep an eye on that. If we measure this out, this will give us an idea of where we want to start looking for a retracement to happen. And right in this area, we've got the 50 and the 61.8. Okay, so that's right in line with the 36 as well. So if we get a nice retracement, okay, here's our impulse leg. And here's our retracement. Now, if we use our FIB clustering technique, we can see, was this the best peak or was this the best peak to work off of or can it give us a little bit more of a, of a tighter zone, a little PRZ to work out of, a little price reversal zone, okay? And so if we do that, look at that. We get a little bit of a tighter range where the 50 from this peak, this swing low, this pivot point, and the 61.8 from this swing low, that pivot point, <clears throat> excuse me, give us a very strong overlapping PRC. 
Okay, it gives us, it's, it's, a, it's just an area of interest, but we'd love to see for price to react at that level because that's a very strong setup using these two pivot points. Okay, again, this is a little more advanced technique called fib clustering. The students are very familiar with it. If you're not familiar with it, it's something I definitely guarantee or I, I suggest you look into or use. This is a technique that can be used for anyone that uses Fibonacci on Renko's or candles. Okay, I actually learned it on candlesticks first and then transferred it over to using with Renko's and I've been teaching it to the Renko students. It's also a, a, a full module in the APAC course. So it's also covered in the APAC course as well. But Fib clustering is a very powerful tool to use for any price action trader or Renko trader. Okay, Audi USD, we had a nice retracement here that went a little too deep. We did not take that trade. And again, currently Audi USD is pushing up. We'd love to see a US dollar rally and for this to pull back down a little bit more. And again, the FIB is just gonna give us kind of a target of where we would wanna look for that, that retracement to pull down to. Yes. And that would be just right in this area. So using these techniques, it gives us very specific areas to look for reversals at, and it takes a lot of the guesswork out of all of it. So if you're interested in how we trade, again, just message me and I'll get you set up. Sorry, I'm not, don't mean to make this trade room a big infomercial. Let's get back to trading, shall we? <laughs> Cat Swiss Frank is, uh, is pushing up. Again, this is a very volatile uptrend and it doesn't have the pullbacks to give us an actual opportunity to jump into this trade. This type of a trade you'd be chasing up and you, we'd never want to chase trades. We don't ever, ever, ever want to chase trades. Remember, chasing a trade versus waiting for the retracement, and I use this analogy a lot with the students, you know, we're trying to get into a car and go in the same direction it's going. And right now this is a race car going 100 miles an hour. Right? We don't want to try and jump in the car while it's still running around the racetrack at 100 miles an hour. We're going to get run over. We want to wait till it pulls back into the pits, comes to a complete stop, then we'll jump in that trade and then wait for it to continue going around the track. All right? I know it's a bit of a, of a janky analogy, but that's the best way that I can phrase it is don't try and chase trades or you will eventually, you will get burned time and time again by the whiplash. Most of the time when retail traders realize there's a trend going on, the trend is almost always over. And we see that in a lot of Elliott wave theory where the institutional leg is very big in, a, in, a, uh, in an Elliott wave formation, right? You get that first leg, you get that, set, that first wave, and then that second wave of a pullback, and then you get that big third wave that's got a lot of money behind it. And this all happens very quickly. And by the time we realize that this is happening, ergo this, that's where profit taking starts. People start to pull, pull back. Then you get your fourth wave. And then the fifth wave known as the retail leg, right? That's where we get in. We get that pullback and then we look to take it on up. And that's just historically how Elliott wave theory works is that by the time this big movement has happened, it's already done. And we're looking, usually people look to get in right about there. And that's a big, big mistake. Okay. So the market will pay you for your patience as long as you understand what's going on with the ebb and the flow of market movements. All right. Frank Yen mm, did break out of that range we were looking at. Let's jump back just a little bit. Okay. Excuse me. We're still under daily and weekly support down here. Okay, so we're still looking to trade this long. Let's, let's zoom back in. And we'll go ahead and get rid of that. So what we need is another rejection level and another secondary level to make this happen. This seems to still be pushing up. We don't know if this is a valid swing high just yet, not a valid pivot point. So we can keep our eye on this one, but not much, um, not much is setting up currently. I'm sorry, let me go back to this really quick. So Audi USD and Audi NZD 
right. Okay, those are gonna be there on our watch list. Let me make sure and I add this. And I always like to annotate whether it's a, um, oh, I don't think we have a Audi Zen, um, whether it's a one, two, three or a level setup. And right now these are all um, EMA setups or what we call one, two, three setups. Okay, let's continue on. Ah, EA continues to fall out of the sky, continues to fall out of the sky. Um, so no real big news on this one other than there's just not any, uh, any really solid place to jump in until we get a bit of a pullback. And again, we can measure that out and get a, a rough idea of where we would wanna look for a pullback to happen. Now here's the problem, is that when we get impulse legs that are fairly extended and very closely trailing EMAs, that the pullback is gonna to need to go up into this area and you can see how far beyond the 36 that is, right? quite a ways beyond the 36. So it's not a true one, two, three setup that we would be looking for. As you can see, we have, we have uh, support dots being formed down here, but the overall trend is bearish. So we wanna look for up in here for a secondary level of resistance to form. That's gonna be our blue four hour dots, right? That will set us up for a possible level trade and a continuation uh, short, because this has just been doing nothing but moving short for quite a while. Um, this is, and EA is quite a quick mover, so this can move very rapidly. You kind of got to be on the ball to catch EA. Um, if you want to trade EA, I would suggest making it one of your main five pairs and just being very vigilant about watching it or moving up to 120 brick frame, a little higher brick frame, and just try swing trading those types of setups. Let's take a look at those. Okay, so EA is gonna be a level setup. If we jump up to the 120 brick frame, right, and very easy to do with our Omnia remote, okay, we can see some, you know, more condensed views of that, but yeah, this will be, this is for a little bit longer term swing trading uh, rather than intraday trading. But again, on very volatile pairs, sometimes you might need to jump up to a higher brick frame. Uh, it's like if you're trying to trade GB, uh, the pound sterling yen, GJ, on the 15 minute chart and it just is moving way too fast for you, you know, jump up to the one hour or the four hour and look for longer term swing trade entries. You'll have to use lower lots and you will have to use uh, bigger stops, but the profit potential is greater as well. EuroCAD, you know, sharp little pullback there that did end up dropping quite a ways, bounce off of the 200 here, and now we're bouncing off of weekly support. Isn't that interesting? So let's start fresh. What we wanna look for is a possible double bottom here. There's two things we could look for. We could look for a possible double bottom, or, and remember, CAD's very weak right now, so the euro should be able to dominate it rather easily in the New York session. So what we want to look for is a either a double bottom or we would need a uh, some type of level of rejection up here. And then a secondary level, again, either here, somewhere in between here, or all the way down to the bottom and then giving us a double bottom. Wherever that support forms, we're gonna be looking to go long on EuroCAD. Okay, that's the, the level setup for right now. And as you can see, by using this hybrid template, it allows us to look through all these different types of setups rather quickly. Speaking of which, I'm gonna to need to speed it up a little bit, make sure we get through all of the pairs. So let me move through these with a little more expediency. And then if you guys have questions, just let me know. Beautiful tap to the 61.8 that happened here a couple of days ago. You can see that one's still pushing up. Entry level on that. And again, another easy 75 pips if you would have entered in on that in the, I believe that happened yesterday in the London session. Euro GBP is kind of bottoming out. Let's see how it reacts if it pulls back to the 200 EMA. 
that's going to be our that's going to be the test of this pair. If it's really truly wanting to retrace back up, it's going to need to break through that 200 before it's going to be a viable option. Otherwise, we'd be looking for a secondary level on EG to go short. But the rule is it cannot go beyond this. And this is another good example of, you see how extended this impulse leg is. It makes it very difficult to find a one, two, three setup because 50, that's solid, that's right on the 200, but 61.8 is above, okay? So this would have to break above and then break down back below the 200 for it to be a, a valid entry if it went that far up. But right now, just as this is showing, if it comes up to the 50, we could look for a short entry there. So let's, act, let's keep that on the watch list. And again, we have, so this is a one, two, three. Again, we have alerts that we use for these um, that can be added in as well. Uh, so a lot of these setups that we're going through, what I'm not showing you is that I'm not showing you the go in afterwards, I'll set up buy and sell alerts for all of the pairs that are here, okay? And then that allows me just to walk away when I need to and I'll wait for an alert to go off on my phone, I can come back and check on these, or I can at least minimize these and work on whatever other things I need to work on for the day. And when the alerts go off, I can jump in the charts, check them. If it's a valid setup, enter in, and that way I'm not spending my whole day in front of the charts. That's our whole objective, is to unchain you from the Forex charts and you know let you go about your, your day while still crushing some uh, really good trades throughout the week. Okay, the whole idea of, of starting up with Forex was for financial freedom, but also for your own freedom. And you shouldn't have to trade financial freedom at the cost of all of your spare time, right? So it's another one of the big things that main reasons why we developed these strategies was to be able to spot these, spend like an hour, hour and a half a day in front of the charts at the most, get, find your setups, find your... Um, entries and then place your trades, set it, and then walk away and just really focus only on trade management where you're just looking for your stack ins and for your exits. And we can set up alerts for those as well. Here is a very strong um, demand zone being formed by these, this double top here on EU. EU been, has been bullish for a while now, which is very uh, odd because EU's been a bearish pair since the beginning of the year. But again, with everything that's going on in the world, it's not, not that odd. So here we'd just be looking for a pullback to this 50 level. Now, if it goes beyond down to the 61, that's okay too. As long as it doesn't go beyond the 61.8, we could have a nice little one, two, three setup here on Euro USD. Uh, again, it's gonna depend on does the dollar rally in the New York session or not the dollar rallies, we could see that pullback and then a continuation, okay, very straightforward. Nice little one, two, three. All right, let's uh, see if we can finish up. We'll try and get through these last ones uh, a little bit quickly. Sometimes I go into a little bit too much detail on the on the setups, but this is our, our Tuesday trade room. So I know a lot of you are new to what we're doing. I'm trying to explain it um, as much as possible without wasting all of our, our trade time together. So I want you guys to get as much information out of this as possible. Um, NCD USD, oh yeah, let's look at our GBP pairs. Our GBP pairs are gonna be pretty chaotic. Yeah, good, reject, good false breakout here on the 200, continuation down. Um, this one's moving very, very sideways right now. So we're going to look for something that's uh, trending a little bit better. GBP CAD here. This is the main thing that if you take away anything from this trade room, I would say take away that your number one step when looking at your currency pairs is spot a trending pair. Know the difference between a trending pair and a consolidating pair and if you see a pair that's consolidating, just move on to the next one. 
look for a trending market because those are the pushes and the pullbacks that will set you up for long-term profitable swing trades. This type of a sideways market doesn't have anything to offer right now until it turns into something like this, right? Nice trending market. This will give us the pushes and the retracements that allow us to get into trending trades and then follow them up or down until they have finished up. Beautiful textbook setup here. This one happened before we jumped in the live room fairly recently, but this is exactly what you want to look for. Nice trending market, no chop, swing high, pulls back to the 36 and the 50, all above the 200 EMA, just spot on right there. Um, um, something that you could do on this trade if you wanted to try and jump into this, uh, there is the possibility, of course, this could make a double top here, but if you wanted to jump in on this one, two, three setup, you could easily set a pending order here as a buy limit, okay? And so if we get a little bit of a pullback and with GBP Swiss franc, that's very possible. Get a little bit of a pullback, it'll tag this entry and then, actually, let me do this. And I'm just using one mini lot Okay, because that's a, you know, with the account, it's going to be easily under a 3% trade. And I don't like to have any more than 5% total going at any given time. This is going to be more around a 1% trade for this. What we'll do is we'll modify the stop loss. We want to make sure that we have one in place. Don't ever trust anybody that's showing you screenshots of trades without stop losses. Okay, that's just, just one of those things. So we got 2066, so we're gonna to have to actually dip into the, uh, actually we won't. We'll do, 20, we'll do a 30 pip stop loss, good. And that's right there at the 61.8. Yeah. So if it breaks further down, what we'll act, actually what we wanna do is just give it a little bit of a buffer, a little bit of a buffer, all right. So that's a pending order if you want to catch that one if, or if you want to catch any setups that you might have missed. I don't recommend jumping in. You know, it's going to depend on your personal style. If you're okay with losing 13 pips, then that's fine. I personally like to put in orders at my market price. I know the price I want to get for that trade. And if I don't get that price, then I'm fine with not taking that trade. And the market will pay you for your patience. Time and time again, the market will pay you for your patience. Nice trending market here, borderline volatile trending. Um, we're not getting really sharp retracements, although this one right here would have been a very nice entry. I can tell you right there, that's definitely 50 or 61.8 for a retracement. Right now, we only have the impulse leg going, so we'll have to wait and see what GBP JPY does. Uh, GBP NZD. This is what we call a volatile range. It's ranging, but it's very wide range. We're talking 100 plus pip range, and it's just playing ping pong, but there's no true extended long-term trend going on on GN. Not from this localized perspective. You see that? See how sideways it is? And then every once in a while we get a big push up, and then we get a big push down, and it's more or less playing this range. Okay. And so the only way to play this would be extreme ping pong, and that's taking entries at the top or the bottom, and then looking for the other side of the range. Other than that, GN's not giving us any real trend to work with. It's giving us the pips to work with, right? We're, we're getting the range uh, to actually make, you know, to make some money, but not the trend to be able to hang on to that trade for a long time and really ride it out into the sunset. GU, Let's see here. GU is a nice, decent trending market. It's a bit stalled out right now. So we're gonna need to see it break. Oh, that's wrong. <laughs> don't want horizontal. I don't want vertical, I want horizontal. So we're gonna need to see it break this market structure before we wanna do anything. And by that I mean, it needs to make another higher high and another higher low. And until it breaks above this level and makes another higher high, for all we know, this could just be turning into chop consolidation and even reversal. If the US dollar does rally, it's gonna start pushing that down. 
Okay, so for now, we just wanna keep an eye on that. NZDCAD, again, another wide volatile range. We've got weekly up here, we've got daily down here. Even for a level trade, this would need to do two things. It would need to form some type of uh, rejection up there and then a secondary level down here, you know, something like this. But we don't know where that swing high is gonna form and where that retracement is gonna pull back to. Those are all unknowns. But that's, this here is generally what we wanna look for. And if something like that starts setting up, we'll know exactly what to do and we'll start hunting for a nice sniper-like entry. NZD Swiss Frank is pushing up hard. We need that to pull back eventually before we can get any type of entry on that. NZD JPY is doing the same. Okay, so we're seeing a lot of strength coming out of the yen right now, especially against the franc and the, uh, or not the yen, the kiwi. A lot of strength coming out of the kiwi right now. Um, but again, that's against the franc and the yen, which are both extremely weak right now. Um, against the CAD, and it's still struggling a little bit. Okay, so not a super strong pair, but strong enough to keep an eye on. All right, and as we pull into the home stretch, we've got about seven minutes before the full on trading kicks into effect in the New York session. And I'm not sure how full the open outcry pits are gonna be due to the coronavirus, but people are still trading. NZDUSD pushes up, does not come back. And let's see here, this actually ended up forming a zone here, look at that. Came back, wasn't deep enough of a retracement though for us to make a play off of. Came down to 38.2, but those are so shallow, um, they're risky. So we don't take trades based off of that due to they have a low probability of playing out at the 38.2. They have a higher probability of pulling back further to the 61.8. So we'd rather just wait for that to happen and avoid those types of you know easy losses. You don't wanna take easy losses, all right? Um, and of course, easy loss being a loss you could have easily avoided if you would have just been patient and waited for the full deep retracement to set up. Here we've got another NZD USD still pushing up. Not much for us to do on that yet. USD CAD just dropping out of the sky with um, the uh, strength in the CAD that we did have yesterday. And then that turned right back around this morning. US dollar, not strong, but the CAD not strong either. So we're seeing a lot of sideways movement there. And we know the franc is very weak, so we see the dollar pushing up against that. What we could look for is a secondary level to form up here. Might be enough to give us a levels entry. USD JPY is just kind of off to the races. The dollar is just absolutely dominating the yen. Um, the yen would have to rally for us to get a pullback on that for that type of an entry. And then we finish up with gold. And if we zoom out a little bit, gold extremely sideways, extremely choppy. Now, that being said, we would, at an initial glance, we would say, okay, well, we're probably gonna be risk on for gold today, meaning that there, it's very risky, there's no clear direction, and we aren't in any position to look for entries, right? But we actually have most of our core elements in place, even though this is looking very, very sideways, very, very choppy, we're expecting the dollar to rally, we're expecting gold to possibly rally with the dollar, and we have everything in place that we need. We have our daily overall trend right in line with our four hour localized trend, okay, or our minor trend, right? So we have our major trend, our minor trend, and everything is above the 200 EMA on this brick frame. So we're actually risk off for gold today to go long. Okay, now how are we gonna trade that? First, let's annotate that out. Okay. So that means that we are open to being able to take trades on gold as long as we maintain both the daily and four hour support. And then the third element is gonna be market structure. We need to have market structure in place, meaning we need to be making higher highs and higher lows. Currently, this is the highest high one hour level. Everything else has been below that. So we need to see price break above this and form a new higher high and a new higher low. And then that new higher low 
is going to be where we would enter in on gold. Okay, because again, we're looking to take it at every new lower low one hour level. Okay, that's how we would enter, that's how we would stack in, and we would keep doing that until we get a new four hour resistance level to form, which will then conflict with our daily support. And then we'll go back to risk on, and we won't take any other entries on gold until everything lines back up in a specific trending direction. And you have to have that with gold because it's so volatile. If you're not following the overall trend of gold, it's very easy to take quick losses um, or to get put into excessive drawdown should the market decide to just change direction. And with gold, it does that very often and very quickly. Right. So your best bet is to make sure that you're on the side of the major and minor trends, that everything's kind of lined up, and then that's going to give you the best possibility and the highest probability of a trade. Okay. All right. We've got uh, one of the questions so far. Let me go ahead and answer that. And then if you guys have any questions, let me know. Otherwise, that's going to be our pre-market roundup. This is our watch list for today. So if you want to copy any of that down. Uh, the question is, I'm using the hybrid setups, the one, two, three, and the level strategy entry. You usually do your entries on the 60 brick time frame. Question is, what's the best higher time frame to use to set up fibs for multiple time frame clustering? Uh, the 120, 240, 480, or the 240? Well, that, that's kind of a difficult one, actually. Um, the, the problem with trying to do multi time frame clustering, which is a technique that we use in price action, where we'll, you know, maybe draw out a Fibonacci. Um, let, me, let me explain that to you guys really quickly for those that don't know what I'm talking about. Um, this is a technique that's very powerful, but that most people don't use. Um, let's say you have a, a trend coming up on the four hour, right? Or something of, of that nature. Let's like this retracement here would be a great example. Okay, so you look at something on a higher time frame, and then you would want to look for pullbacks and retracements that might be happening at that same level or one of those same levels um, on a lower time frame that are going in that same direction, right? So for this, we would drop down to say the one hour. Okay, and now we look at this here. And then we would be looking for some type of other retracement that might happen there. Like look uh, here, All right? So we're looking, it's basically fractals. We're looking for patterns inside patterns. And so we'd look at something like this and we'd measure this out. Boom. And of course, I mean, it's not gonna line up perfectly off just a random example, but it gives you kind of an example here of here we have that little zone now formed between the higher time frame 50 and the lower time frame 61.8. And we get that rejection there and then it's off to the races. I'm not sure what this huge spike was that kind of just screwed up that entire setup, but, uh, but that's the general idea. It's like doing multi time frame support and resistance. You know, you look for a daily support level and then look for, an entry on a lower time frame using like a also a one hour or maybe a 15 minute support level that lines up with that same uh, that same zone, right? So that's that's the concept. Now using it on Renko's, it, it's a little more difficult because technically yes, you can use any higher time frame uh, or brick frame. If you're going to use the 60, I would suggest right like the 240 or the um, even the 480. The problem is. In how we use Renko's, a lot of times when we draw trend lines and um, some different chart analysis tools that we use, when we flip through the, the brick frames, sometimes they can get a little bit skewed. So you just got to keep that in mind. With fibs, not so much. You just have to make sure that you're pulling these over a little bit more so that you can read the so that you can read the numbers, oh man, kind of gets to be a little bit of a little bit difficult to read uh, at times, but not really a big thing. So this would be an example of that. So there's a higher brick frame um, fib, and then we're bringing in this lower brick frame fib here, 
And as this pulls back, so we don't have anything really lining up very solidly here other than the 38.2 and the 61 right up in this area. Okay, but that's how you would do it. And then if you can get, yeah, if you can get overlapping levels, especially the 61 and the 50, or at least close enough to form price reversal zones, then you will be good. So yeah, I would say 240 or 480. Um, you know, obviously the higher up you go, the stronger the trend and the stronger these institutional le FIB levels are going to be. So yeah, good question though. Good question. Ronaldus is just killing it in the um, APAC. He's in the FIB course right now. So um, I'm not surprised by the FIB related questions, but yeah, he's just rocking that out. Um, I'm getting ready to go into the Elliott Wave section too. So you're really going to enjoy that. And then it's uh, when you get into the Ichimoku cloud section, that's really going to blow your mind. Um, I'd be interested to see combining the Ichimoku and the Renkos. I'm, I'm sure there's got to be some type of stellar strategy in there somewhere that I just haven't had time to completely flesh out. All right, guys, that's it. Um, any other questions? I don't see any other questions from the Facebook group. I don't see anybody, any questions from students. Um, so yeah, that's it for today. Look, thanks everybody for joining me. I appreciate everybody that came in live in the free room. We'll be doing this every Tuesday. So please feel free to come join us if you want to just hang out and trade with us on Tuesday mornings or learn more about Renko trading. Again, if you want to become a Renko trader, uh, check out the website zenfxtrading.com. We've got our course on there. We've also got our Discord channel. Please come join us there. That's completely free. Ton of resources, ton of free stuff on the website, ton of great traders in the community. So if you're interested in all that, please come join us. Other than that, guys, you have your marching orders. You know what to do. Keep your eyes on these pairs. Let's catch some really good trades today. Otherwise, stay safe. Keep your family safe. Make sure that uh, you guys are uh, staying out of harm's way, and I will see you same time, same place, students, I mean, same time, same place tomorrow morning, and for everyone else, same time, same place next week. Thanks again for joining me. Have a great day, and I'll talk to everybody later. Bye-bye.